and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, tomorrow is uh, Saturday and it's the day of the National Sudoku Championship here in the UK. That's hosted by the Times. Uh, it happens in London. You have to qualify for the, for the tournament and if you do you'll be faced with eight Sudoku puzzles tomorrow. Uh, if you get through to the grand finals there's four in a semi-final and then four in a final. And I thought we might take a look today at um, one puzzle from a previous year. So I think this this puzzle appeared in the 2015 Grand Final. So you might like to pause the video, uh, take a look at it and see how quickly you could have solved it. Um, now, to give you an idea, I think that the winning time, I think Tom Collier won the 2015 uh, championship and he finished the four puzzles in the final in about 24 minutes. So you need to be averaging about six minutes for a puzzle of this difficulty now which is very quick uh, interestingly though you know these puzzles are not monstrously hard they are intended to be solvable using sort of fairly normal methods I think occasionally you might see an x-wing uh, but more normally you know with standard notation it's about finding the naked singles the hidden singles uh, you know the pairs and things like that so I thought what we might do is just take a quick look at this puzzle and see how we might go about solving it. Um, bearing in mind that we need to be as efficient as possible if we're going to achieve uh, you know, the real speed that's needed to be competitive in the Nationals Championship. So where would I start here? Well, you can see we have two sevens, so we'd be able to write a seven in up here if the software lets me do it. This is very powerful. If you ever you know, if you start creating lines of three within a three by three block, you need to work hard to try and use those as as much as you can. You can see here, in fact, we have a three six pair on either side of the grid, and no three six in this block. So we're going to actually be able to place a three six combination up at the top there. Uh, this cell here now has to be oh, to do that. Um, this cell here has to be a 1 because of this one here and this one here. Uh, now, what else can we see? Uh, well, we can see a 4 here and a 4 here. That means there's a 4 in this cell, and that means there's a 4 here as well. And that gives us another nice pair. Look, a 2-5 combination in, the, in this 3x3 three three block, which seems to be crucial to the puzzle. Scan down, 2 here. That's got to be a two over on this side. Let's put that in. Uh, what are we looking for? Three, six, and eight down the central column. Um, and three, five, and six in the central three by three block. You can see we can place a six, five pair look because of this six and this five. That gives us a nice pair in the central. 3x3 three three block and forces this to be a 3. Um, now, what can I see next? Well, you see we can place 7s in there. Look, I'm not sure how helpful that's going to be. Um, again, very conscious of the facts. As I'm so, as even as I'm solving this under no pressure at all, that I want to be as efficient as possible. This 5 here. And I pencil mark fives in, but we need to use the pencil mark fives that we've got up there, look. And that is going to be helpful, because now this is forced to be a five, and that resolves the five-six pair in the middle, um, which that really ought to be useful. You can see we can immediately place a large six over this side. And, ah, yes. Okay, so now... As usual, and this is very common with these championship level puzzles, uh, for the, especially for the Times Championship, there's a, for almost always either a naked single or a hidden single that you need to find that makes the solve much more efficient. Now here, I advise you to pause the grid if you can't see where this is and just, just study it for a moment because I think I'm right in saying, if we look over on the right hand side of the grid, you should be able to work out a position for a 1, especially if you look at column 9. 
So if we look at column 9 here, you can see we've got uh, one, what, 2, 3, 4, and 6. So 1, 5, 7, 8, and 9 to place. So we have the 7, 8, 9 here. But the reason I think this is quite hard to spot, or your mind doesn't naturally spot it, is this 5 isn't it's not appearing in the checking things. You have to allow your eyes to just shift upwards slightly, spot that there's a five here, and therefore this cell here can only be a one. Uh, now I'm not saying that's going to crack the puzzle, but it's that sort of thing that really does help. And you can now use this three, place threes here, that's going to give us a big three down there, look threes into these positions. Uh, you could immediately here use uniqueness. Um, well, in fact, we can place a one here like that uh, just to complete the column. And then if we look at the top here, we have this three, six combination. Now we can't, therefore, this, this arrangement of the grid would not be possible um, because if we end up in this situation, then whichever way we place the sixes and threes, we could simply transpose them and place them the other way round, and we'd have a second solution. So imagine that the final solution to this puzzle contained um, this arrangement. If you were to study the grid, you could see that we could just simply swap this three and six over, swap this three and six over, and we'd have another way of presenting this puzzle. It would be the same puzzle in terms of all of the other logic apart from these two cells. There's no way of um, disambiguating which way round this was intended, uh, intended to be. Therefore, we can say that this will not be, this is not possible. And therefore, there cannot be a six in either of these two cells because if there is, when we look at the solution, we'll end up with that pattern. So we could actually place a six there, look. That's going to give us a 6 here. Um, this has to be an 8, so 8, 3, and that results a 3, 6. So you can see there's nothing monstrously hard about this. Um, you know, I'm sure you can complete the solves yourselves and you'll find that, um, you know, it, it is, these are doable puzzles. You just have to do them efficiently, and that's the, that's what the champion will do. He will, he or she will find a way to, um, to complete the puzzles very, very efficiently and pretty damn quickly. So do let us know in the comments if you've managed to be or you, you managed to solve it in a competitive time. Um, I wish those of you who are going tomorrow the best of luck. Um, and I think Mark's, Mark's going to attend, so he will no doubt do a video telling us about puzzles and how his own competition went. So thanks for watching. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.